Hello, knowledge seekers. In this episode of 20 Minute Books, we delve into the insightful realms of communication and persuasion with Just Listen by Mark Goulston. Published in 2009, this compelling book unveils a fusion of proven persuasion and listening strategies, enriched with innovative approaches to make your message resonate with anyone. Goldston, a renowned psychiatrist and seasoned business coach, shares his expertise on the nuances of effective listening, the intricacies of the human brain, and the dynamics of human behavior. By embracing these concepts, readers are empowered to inspire and motivate, catering to the underlying needs of their audience. Mark Goldston's credentials are impressive, with a litany of published works and contributions to notable publications like Fast Company, and Tribune Media Services. Further distinguished by the Consumers Research Council of America as one of America's top psychiatrists, Goulston's insight is rooted in a deep understanding of human psychology. Just Listen is an essential read for anyone keen to enhance their communicative prowess. Whether you're involved in therapy, mediation, or simply strive to wield influence with integrity and understanding, This book serves as a guiding light to navigating complex interpersonal landscapes. Join us to unlock the secrets of persuasion through the power of listening and transform your interactions in profound ways. Just listen. Discover the secret to getting through to absolutely anyone. Introduction. Unlock the power of effective communication and transform your relationships. Communication is the linchpin of human connection, shaping every aspect of our lives, from personal relationships to professional success. The art of persuasion is often elusive. How do we get others to connect with our ideas, invest in our vision, and hear what we're saying? The answer lies not in talking more, but in listening better. Imagine you're perched on the precipice of opportunity, but to leap forward, you need to persuade someone to see things your way. We've all faced such moments that demand us to influence others, but despite our best efforts, we fall disappointingly short because we prioritize our own narrative over truly engaging with others. This is where we inadvertently seal our own fate, failing to communicate effectively. Now, picture yourself as a communicator who holds the power to not only be heard, but to inspire action and commitment. The secret? It's all about shifting the focus from you to them. By embracing the power of active listening, you unleash the potential to create genuine buy-in for your message. Throughout this journey, we'll unravel practical techniques to refine your conversational skills. Discover how leveraging curiosity can pull someone back from a brink of despair. Embrace your inner logician, much like Mr. Spock, as one of your mightiest communicative strengths, and learn how the revered Colin Powell's response to a sensitive query garnered immense respect. Take a step back, tune in, and prepare to transform the way you interact with the world through the mastery of just listening. This isn't merely a set of instructions, it's an invitation to forge deeper connections and embark on a path that leads others to truly listen and respond. Part 1. Unlock progress by mastering the art of listening to overcome resistance. Take a moment to reflect on your daily interactions. Have you noticed that many conversations resemble duels of logic, each person armed with arguments as their weapons of choice? However, what if the key to influence wasn't in the conviction of your debate, but in the ability to disarm through listening? Trying to sway others with raw arguments or forceful persuasion often breeds resistance rather than agreement. Consider the moments when people approach you burdened with stress. They aren't seeking a well-crafted argument or a solution. Rather, they long for an empathetic ear to simply acknowledge their concerns. Envision a dire scenario. A man named Steve is perched dangerously on the edge of a building's rooftop desperate and contemplating a tragic leap. Authorities brace for the worst as Lieutenant Williams steps forward, a negotiator poised to intervene. Williams presents logical reasons why Steve should reconsider, assuring him that help is within reach. 
yet his words fall on deaf ears. Steve, feeling misunderstood, pushes back against the offered assistance in frustration. Williams's shortfall was not in his intent, but in his failure to truly listen. Listening opens the door for others to voice their emotions and apprehensions, establishing a foundation for trust and eventually constructive dialogue. Now imagine Lieutenant Brown, another negotiator, enters the scene. Instead of rushing to fix the situation, he attentively listens to Steve's predicament. I bet you feel this is your only way out, Brown empathizes. Recognized and validated, Steve answers, yes. In that moment of understanding, Brown carefully navigates through Steve's despair. He inquires about the heartbreaks and setbacks that led Steve to the edge. Through attentive listening, he gradually steers Steve away from the brink, showing him unseen avenues of hope. This tale serves as a crucial lesson. To truly persuade and provoke open-mindedness, we must listen first. Enabling others to be heard is one of our most innate abilities, a biological imperative we are wired to exercise. As we delve deeper, you'll uncover how our natural predisposition to listen can be nurtured into a powerful tool for overcoming resistance and inspiring forward momentum. Part 2. Feel the Connection. How Emotion. Mirroring cultivates positive bonds. Imagine a world where every gesture of sadness or joy you express is reflected back at you, as if your emotions echo through the people around you, reinforcing a sense of shared experience. This isn't a whimsical fancy. It's a fundamental aspect of human interaction, rooted deep in our neural landscape. The familiar saying, monkey see, monkey do, captures more than just mimicry. It unveils a profound psychological truth. As social beings, we are intrinsically attuned to the emotional states of others, instinctively mirroring their sentiments in a synchronized dance of feelings. Our brains are wired with remarkable cells, known as mirror neurons, which resonate with the emotions we observe, enabling us to internalize and echo back the experiences of those around us. Ever flinched at the sight of someone else's misfortune, or felt the pang of sorrow from another's tears? That's your mirror neurons at work pulling you into an empathetic embrace with your fellow humans. The beauty of mirror neurons lies in their ability to foster empathy. To the extent that renowned researcher V. S. Ramachandran prefers to call them empathy neurons. By mirroring the emotional waves of others, we create invisible threads connecting us, knitting together the human fabric with threads of understanding and kinship. These neurons also drive our subconscious efforts to align with others' expectations and earn their affirmation. Consider a public speaker who senses a growing disinterest in the room. Glances wandering, attention scattering. It's his mirror neurons that prompt him to announce a break, responding to the silent wishes of the audience. The flip side, however, is that when our emotional offerings are met not with empathy but with indifference or hostility, the bonds fray, and we drift apart. It's a dynamic akin to an uneven conversation, where one speaks and the other remains silent, leading to a sense of disconnection and isolation. Research indicates that a lack of reciprocal mirroring can lead to deficits in our mirror neuron receptors, making us feel lonely and detached. The modern world, with its barrage of impersonal digital communication and relentless pace, has eroded the time-honored practice of emotion mirroring. As we lose ourselves in screens and textual exchanges, we risk severing the invisible ties that once kept us intimately linked to one another. Part 3. Engage the mind. How rational thinking enhances our listening skills. Within us lies an internal dialogue, a constant stream of debate that seems to pit varying aspects of ourselves against each other. This mental tug of war is no mere illusion. It reflects the complex structure of our brains, composed of three distinct layers, each contributing to our thoughts and reactions in unique ways. The most ancient of these layers, known as the reptilian brain, operates on impulse and survival instincts. This domain is hardwired to respond instantly, dictating those split-second decisions to either take a stand or take flight. 
Occasionally, it might even leave us frozen, akin to a deer caught in the glare of oncoming headlights. A step above this lies the mammalian brain, a more advanced stratum where our emotions reign supreme. Envision it as the stage for your inner drama, a scene populated by intense emotions like joy, sorrow, and passion. Emotions that stem from this layer are visceral, shaping our moods and coloring our interactions with the world. At the peak of this cerebral landscape is the rational brain. This is the hub of logic and analysis, our very own internal Mr. Spock, the iconic Star Trek character renowned for his judicious assessment of every situation. Here, we weave together insights from both instinctual and emotional layers, crafting a logical blueprint for action. Understanding these layers is pivotal not just for self-awareness, but for nurturing effective listening in our interactions with others. In order to foster a receptive environment for our messages, we need to align our communication with the appropriate cognitive layer in our listener's mind. As we venture further, we'll explore strategic methods to ensure our conversational partners are tuned in with the right mindset. This guidance will enable you to steer interactions towards productive, rational dialogue enhancing the power of your words and the receptiveness of your audience. Part 4. Prime your rational brain for effective conversation. Whether it's a heated debate or a tender heart-to-heart, the key to truly connecting in any conversation is ensuring that both you and your partner are engaging with your rational minds. But emotions can be powerful, often hijacking our ability to think clearly and strategize thoughtfully. To navigate this, it's essential to master our emotions first. Consider a high-pressure scenario faced by Colin Powell, the former U.S. Secretary of State. He was once publicly questioned about the sensitive issue of his wife's treatment in a mental hospital. Powell, rather than succumbing to indignation, took a deep breath to compose himself. His response was measured and potent. Excuse me. The person you love more than anyone is living in hell and you don't do whatever you can to get her out. Do you have a problem with that, sir? His calmness amidst the storm not only resolved the situation but also strengthened his leadership stature. However, we're all human. And there will be times when our emotions get the better of us. When our primal instincts sense threat, Mr. Spock within shuts down and the emotional amygdala takes the helm triggering a domino effect of fight-or-flight responses. Under such duress, our capacity for logical reasoning is compromised, replaced by the raw tide of feelings and instincts. Fortunately, there's a way back to rational thought. By vocalizing our fears and anxieties, we grant ourselves the space to decompress and refocus. This simple act of articulation has been scientifically shown to soothe the amygdala bringing the reins back into the hands of our more level-headed, rational mind. This understanding is not only vital for our self-regulation, but also imperative when others start to feel overwhelmed. By creating an environment where fears can be acknowledged without judgment, we pave the way for everyone involved to return to a state of calm reason. When that happens, we open the doors once more to effective listening and meaningful dialogue. Part 5. Embrace vulnerability to forge stronger listening bonds. To truly excel in communication, it's essential to embrace our vulnerability. This may seem counterintuitive, as vulnerability often feels like a weakness we should hide. Yet, in reality, showing our authentic, vulnerable selves is a potent form of empowerment, one that invites deeper connections and understanding from others. Consider for a moment the dynamics of mirroring emotions, the way our feelings and reactions resonate with those of the people around us. This only works if we are honest about what we're feeling. If you mask your true emotions, you will never fully connect because there's nothing genuine for others to reflect back. Picture yourself on the brink of delivering a significant presentation, your nerves frayed, yet instead of acknowledging this vulnerability, you cloak it in frustration. When a colleague makes a thoughtless comment, you snap back in anger. The result? A cycle of anger, reinforcing the very walls between you and the support you truly need. Now, 
Reimagine that scenario. This time you let your guard down and express your nervousness. Chances are, your colleague might recall their own experiences with anxiety and offer you the encouragement that could lift your spirits. Opening up not only demonstrates your authenticity, but also gives permission for others to reveal their vulnerabilities. Let's envision a poignant scene in a bustling law firm where an associate is overwhelmed by tears after a painful morning goodbye with his daughter. Normally, his boss might walk past, too engrossed in her work to stop. But today, she chooses to enter his office, to share and listen. She admits to the struggles of balancing career and family life and shares her vision of a more family-friendly workplace. Moved by her openness, the associate shares more of his own struggles, like the resurgence of unhealthy habits. Through vulnerability, the boss doesn't just offer support. She earns trust, demonstrating her commitment to her employees' welfare. By allowing vulnerability to surface and engaging with it, we provide a space for others to truly listen. This, in turn, becomes a source of strength, fostering environments where trust flourishes and genuine communication thrives. Part 6. Break the Ice with Leveling. The Key to Relaxed and Open Dialogue. Have you ever noticed how effortlessly conversation flows when we talk about our favorite subject, ourselves? This simple truth can be your secret weapon when seeking to ease people into an open and engaging dialogue. One powerful technique to cultivate an environment of mutual openness is by employing the side-by-side approach. This strategy involves posing thought-provoking questions during a shared experience, and then, carefully, layering on more questions to further the connection. Consider a father and son duo driving together, a journey that they've made countless times, but today the dynamics take a heartwarming turn. Rather than the trite inquiries about schoolwork, the father casually asks his son to predict which of his friends might grapple with troubles later on. This question captures the son's curiosity and prompts a sincere discussion about challenges his friend Michael faces. Why is that? The father delves deeper gently. As the son unveils his perception of Michael's troubled family dynamics and his own stance, should his friend find himself in a bind, a meaningful conversation blossoms between them, one that revolves around empathy, loyalty, and friendship. Now let's contrast two different scenarios to demonstrate how breaking conventional interaction patterns can deepen a dialogue. A drug rep approaches Dr. X with a straightforward pitch about a new medication, a common, expected interaction. Alternatively, the rep starts with an intriguing, personal query. Excuse me, Dr. X, do you mind if I ask you something personal? I just wanted to know if you still find joy in being a doctor. Between the two, the latter disrupts the expected pattern, showcasing a genuine interest in the doctor's experience thus elevating the conversation beyond mere transactional exchange. In essence, when we shake up the well-worn grooves of our interactions, we carve out fresh pathways for rapport and understanding. Asking novel, engaging questions doesn't just make the other person feel valued, it opens up a channel for dialogue that is deeper, richer, and infinitely more rewarding. Part 7. Empathy the golden bridge to mutual understanding and value. To truly make others feel understood and valued, there's no more potent a tool than empathy. However, offering genuine empathy can be perplexing. How do you show you truly grasp someone else's feelings? Here is a simple, empathetic communication strategy. First, identify the emotion at play. In this case, let's say anger. Communicate your perception to the other person. I'm trying to get a sense of what you're feeling and I think it's anger. Is that correct? If not, what are you feeling? This demonstrates care and opens the door for them to correct or confirm your assessment. Once you've pinned down the emotion, inquire about its intensity. How angry are you? This invites them to share the depth of their feelings without judgment. Remember to brace yourself for a potent response and resist the urge to defend yourself. This is their moment. To understand the root of their anger, gently ask. And the reason you're so angry is because 
this shows your willingness to understand their perspective more profoundly. Following their response, collaborate to find a solution. Tell me, what needs to happen for that feeling to feel better? This shifts the conversation from an issue to focus on resolution. Finally, encourage mutual action. What can I do to make that happen? What can you do to make that happen? By doing this, you're extending a hand, showing you're ready to move forward together in addressing the problem. Imagine the powerful effect this approach could have in a situation where conflict is rife, like between two competitive agents in a real estate firm. The younger agent, adept at winning new clients and fond of boasting about high-profile connections, clashes with the older agent, a master in managing those clients but disdainful of the younger's perceived arrogance. A mediator steps in, allowing each to air grievances and soon realizes that the younger agent feels unseen and unappreciated. It's not about the glory, but the support. Acknowledging this need transforms the dynamic. Tears flow, hearts soften, and healing words are exchanged. The older agent expresses the deep respect they hold for their colleague, soothing bruised egos. Both pledge to temper their behavior, and with this newfound empathy, the firm thrives once more. This story highlights how pivotal empathy is in making others feel truly felt. It is a reminder that by practicing empathy diligently, we can overcome barriers, find common ground, and foster an environment of growth and collaboration. Final summary. The essence of impactful communication is summed up in a simple yet often overlooked principle. To be heard, one must first lend an ear. The ability to truly listen forms the cornerstone of any meaningful dialogue, paving the way for mutual understanding and receptivity. By actively listening, you're not merely awaiting your turn to speak. Instead, you are cultivating a connection, forging a shared space where ideas can resonate and genuine exchanges can flourish. It's a process that doesn't just make good sense. Biologically, we're wired for it. Our mirror neurons thrive on reflection and empathy, responding to the emotions and gestures of those around us. Listening is more than an act of silence. It's an active engagement with another's perspective. This approach ensures that all participants in a conversation are in tune with their rational minds, prime territory for collaboration and progress. Remember, by demonstrating vulnerability, by showing real concern, and by leveling with your audience, you invite a spirit of openness that can revolutionize even the most strained interactions. The result is not only a conversation enhanced by depth and trust, but also an experience where all voices feel valued and heard. In essence, the art of listening is the gateway to influence, fostering an environment where ideas are exchanged not as battle cries, but as bridges to collective insight and action. Thank you for joining me today on this journey of learning and discovery as we explored the insights of another thought-provoking book in our growing library of knowledge. If you've enjoyed our time together, please take a moment to follow our podcast give us a five-star rating, and share 20-minute books with other knowledge seekers. Your support truly means a lot. Don't forget to join me again in the next episode, where we will delve into another enriching book. Until then, happy reading and happy listening.